My brothers and sisters in Christ, today it can feel very challenging to be Christian in a very paganized world. Pagan is perhaps not a term we often think of today, but it is, as some have called it, a post-Christian world. Uh, I don't know that that's the best description of it, but it's a world that is seeking answers in places other than faith in the one true God. Even if it acknowledges God in, in reality, in terms of devotion, of, of seeking truth in his name, the world seems to have in many ways moved past this. And so, for the one who professes true Christian faith, this is a frustrating uh, world to deal with. And in fact, as one is called to not only preach the gospel in words, but especially to live in accord with the gospel, it inherently involves sticking out. Uh, which in of itself can come with a price to pay in today's world. This should not come as a surprise. It has always been this way in the history of the church. Many seek uh, you know, refuge in a return to Christendom of old, of the idea of a, a Christian empire. But in fact, these dreams, while political realities have changed over time, the true exercise of Christian faith has always been countercultural, has always involved a clash with the powers of the earth. It's been this way from the beginning, and it will be until the end when all things are fulfilled. And so we see this, whether it's in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we see now as Paul goes on trial, and even the, the discord, it's not just for the powers that be targeting Christians, but amongst themselves. For all of those who are into self-promotion or serving of false powers, there's inherently division. Paul plays upon this as he gets even the Pharisees and Sadducees, plays on their conflict to, to turn the attention off of himself, and yet we know how the story with Paul will end. The Lord speaks to him that not only will he suffer in Jerusalem, but ultimately he will go to testify to the faith in Rome. And of course, the great origins of the Christian faith in Rome, as Peter and Paul both witnessed to the gospel through their martyrdom there. But all of this culminates. So whether it's the beginning of the church there, whether it's St. Marcellinus and Peter, uh, who we celebrate today, uh, two of the, the early martyrs under Diocletian, uh, they, one of them a priest, one of them an exorcist, who both, same thing, died for converting people to Christianity. So whether it's the early church or the 21st century, there has always been a tension that to live out one's Christian faith involves putting oneself as marked as opposed to the spirit of the age, the spirit of the world. But this need not frighten us. In fact, it shouldn't frighten us. We hear in the gospel passage the words of Jesus in this high priestly prayer, these beautiful words from the many chapters of the Gospel of John dedicated to the Last Supper, Jesus has discourse with his disciples and then concludes with what's called the High Priestly Prayer in chapter 17, this prayer to the Father in the hearing of his disciples, that Jesus speaks to the true heart of the Holy Trinity, the oneness of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And this oneness is not static, it's dynamic, because Jesus has been sent by the Father for us. We have been created in the image and likeness of God. And so the love of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has poured forth in creation and creating us. And there is a longing that we be part of that communion. And so the Father has not just settled, doesn't sit back as we suffer, as we flail, uh, as we die. The Father is not just watching from afar, as many today would accuse but the Father is constantly active and has sent his Son, and the Father and Son have sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, to draw us into that communion of love. Does that rescue us from every suffering? Of course not. Why would we not expect to suffer if Jesus himself did? But the longing of the Father, not just a cold will, but the longing of God that we be one with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as they are one. This is the prayer of Jesus. This is what is on his heart as he goes to the cross to suffer all things and to die for us is the longing that we be one with him. My brothers and sisters, if we are given the grace for this, why do the sufferings of this present age concern us? Why do they frighten us? 
In fact, we have been offered everything. If only we stay true and keep our eyes on the prize. In fact, to suffer a little now for the prize of eternal glory, and not glory for ourselves, but to bask in the love and glory of God for all eternity. Wow, what a small price we're asked to pay for that. May we remain true to the gospel we have been given. May we seek God with all of our hearts and minds. Saints Marcellinus and Peter, pray for us. Mm -hmm.